Let's continue with another very important quantum algorithm, the hero hasidim lloyd algorithm, which is also called quantum matrix inversion. This protocol is used in many, many quantum machine learning algorithms as, as a fundamental building block. So it is, it is really important that we understand the logic behind it, but it's a tricky algorithm. So first, let's go through uh, a quick overview of how it works. So the problem that we want to solve is, you know, given a, a system of linear equations, we want to, and assuming that uh, the A coefficient matrix is invertible, then we want to calculate the solution x as the inverse of A times B. And we would like to find a quantum algorithm for this. Classically, this would take some polynomial time, probably cubic in time, or maybe a bit uh, better. And uh, there is a, uh, this algorithm gives you an exponentially faster quantum protocol for performing something very similar. So first, we have to consider state preparation. So you have to prepare the, the beta state, so the B state, the B vector. And uh, this is in amplitude encoding. So you might have to use a fairly involved circuit to prepare this. So that already increases your circuit depth. And then A here would be corresponding to a Hamiltonian encoding since we can think of this as, uh, as a Hamiltonian. So if your A is not Hermitian, then you have to make it Hermitian by applying a simple transformation. And then you would be able to encode it as a Hamiltonian and then eventually as a unitary. The next stage is to perform a quantum phase estimation because we are going to estimate the eigenvalues of this A operator. And by estimating the eigenvalues of this operator, well, what we are going to get uh, is um, a very simple description of the structure of A and uh, that allows us uh, to easily invert the, the eigenvalue. So after quantum phase estimation, we have this state, roughly this state. So it's some state. And what we are going to do is we introduce an ancillary register, one more, and we apply a control rotation. On, uh, on the eigenvalue estimate. And what that's going to give us is that this is now the ancillary register, this additional one qubit. For the time being, let's forget about what the rest of the state is here because this is what happens. Uh, this is what the important thing that happens. So by creating this kind of conditional rotation on the ancilla, you can encode some constant times the inverse of the eigenvalue in the probability amplitude of the one state of your ancillary register. And that's what we are going to use. But before we can use that, first we have to uncompute the eigenvalue register, which means that everything that we did for the quantum phase estimation, we have to reverse. So this will be a full quantum phase estimation reversed in this circuit. And the reason we have to do that is because if we start doing any kind of measurement here, uh, these registers are entangled. And if you remember the very beginning of this course, you know that if you, if you just trace out or get rid of uh, a part of, of uh, an entangled system, then you're going to end up with some kind of a mixed state. We want to avoid that. So we have to uncompute un everything in these registers. So we have this state. So this is just essentially B itself expanded in, a, in, its, in an eigenbasis. And then this would be the vacuum state of the eigenvalue register. And then your ancilla is untouched by this uh, inverse operation. So once we do this, we can confidently do a rejection sampling, which means that we measure the ancilla. And if we get 0, we discard everything and we restart the calculation. And if we get 1, that means that now uh, whatever, uh, whatever uh, output you get is uh, in probability proportional to the inverse of lambda. And that's what we are, are going to use to estimate observables or, or some measurable thing uh, where we need the, the solution of the linear system of equations. So the resource requirements of this protocol are, are steep. So if you watched Roger Malkiel's guest lecture, he talked about Shor's algorithm. 
if you look at how Shor's algorithm works, it actually has a similar structure. It has a very similar structure to quantum phase estimation. So that gives us a lower bound on how, how much resource we need to, to run this protocol. So for a 2048-bit RSA encryption, we would need 4,000 logical uh, uh, qubits. And that would take us in the range of millions of physical qubits on which we have to apply error correction. So if you look at the number of qubits we have today on gate model quantum computers, they are, they are less than 100. So we are very, very far from being able to implement this algorithm in, in a practical manner. But this algorithm is definitely very important as we move forward and we uh, build better and better quantum computers.